Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Precious people of God and viewers at home, you are warmly welcome to another refreshing time in the presence of God Almighty. Today is Tuesday, August 6, in the year of our Lord, 2019. And the topic for our meditation from the Daily Fonte Devotional is Jesus Christ, the Chosen One. Our text is taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 9, verse 28 to 36. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we worship and adore your holy name. We thank you for this new day. We thank you for the gift of life you have given to each and every one of us. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. As your word goes forth this morning, let it bless your people and work wonders in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Once again, the topic is Jesus Christ, the Chosen One. And our text is taken from Luke chapter 9, verses 28 through 36. I read, Now it came to pass, about eight days after these sayings, that the two Peter, John, and James, and went up on the mountain to pray. As he prayed, the appearance of his face was altered, and his robe became white and glistening. And behold, two men talked with him, who were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his disease, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and those with him were heavy with sleep, and when they were fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Then it happened, as they were parting from him, that Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah not knowing what he said. Why he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were fearful as they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. When the voice had ceased, Jesus was found alone, but they kept quiet and told no one in those days, any of the things they had seen. Jesus is the chosen one. He cannot be compared to any man. He's more than anybody on earth. In our Bible reading, our Lord Jesus Christ went to pray on a mountain with Peter, John, and James. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became very bright. Moses and Elijah appeared, also in glorious splendor, talking with Jesus. This was a glimpse of Jesus' glory, also called the Transfiguration, where Jesus shows that he was not just a prophet, but God's own son. Moses that talked with Jesus represented the law, while Elijah represented the prophets. The glorious appearance prompted Peter to desire to build a tabernacle for the tree. He did not know what he was saying until a voice came from the cloud identified Jesus as the Son of God, whom men and women should listen to, because God the Father delights in him. Matthew chapter 12, verses 18 through 19. God says, he will put his spirit in him, 
He will proclaim justice, and in his name, the nations will put their trust. Isaiah had earlier prophesied about the coming of the chosen one. In Isaiah chapter 42, verse 1 through 4, the Bible says, Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. It will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry aloud or lift up his voice or make it hard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a faintly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be discouraged. He had established justice in the heart, and the coastland wait for the law. Indeed, God the Father delights in him. Announcing the beginning of his public ministry at baptism, in Luke chapter 3, verse 21 to 22, the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven saying, You are my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased to confirm Jesus as the chosen one. Also in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, Jesus affirmed himself like this when he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The Bible says, he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down, and the eyes of them that were in the synagogues were fasting on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. Jesus here was quoting Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 2. Isaiah pictures the deliverance of Israel from exile in Babylon as a year of jubilee, when all debts are cancelled, all slaves freed, and all property returned to original owners. This you can find in Leviticus chapter 25. But the release from Babylon, Ezai, had not brought the fulfillment the people had expected. They were still a conquered and oppressed people. So Jesus announced, Today is this crucial fulfilled in your ears, thereby proclaiming himself as the chosen one who will bring the good news to pass. I don't know the condition in which you are this day. Are you oppressed? Are you under one bondage or the other? The Lord Jesus is ready, is the chosen one, is ready to deliver you and to set you free. And perhaps you are sick, the Lord is ready to heal you, being the chosen one. Is the Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals. He will heal you from all your infirmity and he will set you free from every form of bondage. Are you broken hearted? He's here to give you joy. And I pray that the everlasting joy of the Lord shall be your portion in Jesus' name. The second account that you had the account that you had of in our gospel lesson from Luke chapter 9 take us towards the end of Jesus' ministry and his life. Jesus has spent the previous three years traveling throughout Israel, preaching and treating the people and performing miracles. The events of Luke 9 took place about a week after Jesus had asked his, his disciples who they believed that he was. It was Peter who spoke up on behalf of the disciple and said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. You get this in Matthew chapter 16, verse 16. A week had passed after this declaration. So Jesus now took three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John away from the crowd to the Mount of Transfiguration to pray 
so as to reveal whom he was to them. He did this so as to strengthen them in faith. It was a kind of spiritual meal, something that would help hold them because of what he was going to pass through. He had earlier told them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the sheep priests and teachers of the law, and he must be killed, and on the third day be raised to life. Luke chapter 9, verse 22, which was the last thing the disciples wanted to hear. So Jesus needs to reveal himself to them, so as, as the son of the living God, so that they can be strengthened in faith when this thing comes to pass. Who do you take Christ to be? Not only is this question a perennial and personal question, it is also providential. Is he one of the prophets to you? Or a great lawgiver and master whose teachings and moral should be applied to our life? Jesus is more than that. He is the King of kings, the Lord of lords. The transfiguration was the proof that Jesus was the Son of the living God and the Savior of the whole world. There is none like him. He is greater than the prophets and the law. He is the author and finisher of our faith, the captain of our salvation, our cornerstone, the bread of life, God our provider, the living water, and the counselor. Is he the Lord of your life? Have you accepted him as your Lord and Savior? If yes, I say congratulations to you. But if you have not, please give your life to him today that it may be well with your soul. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John chapter 14 verse 6. I pray for you today that as you respond to this call, the Lord will accept you and make you a son and make you his doctor. He will wash away your sins and give you the power of the Holy Spirit to live above sins all the days of your life and it shall always be well with you. Say after me, if you are given your life to Jesus, O oh Lord, I give my life to you, save my soul, forgive me all my sins, and wash me with your precious blood. Empower me with the Holy Spirit that I may live a life pleasing to you all the days of my life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, and God bless you. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, Subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.